Now, to start, we're going to assume that you've already downloaded the fundraising plugin and installed it into the back end of your WordPress installation. You'll notice here we're working with a standard, simple WordPress installation. You have the obligatory Hello World post with one comment, and you'll see we're just running the standard template theme that WordPress gives you when you start off. We have just one sample page installed, and we're going to show you how to add this fundraiser menu item, and we'll do that through the back end of the panel. Again, once you install the fundraising plugin, it will install a menu item here, and you have a few different areas of settings, the getting started, fundraisers, add new, donations, and settings. Now, the getting started is a real simple way to go through this. It will actually walk you through step by step these three steps in terms of configuring the plugin, creating a fundraiser, and viewing the widgets that you have available to you. Now if you just click on getting started, a little modal WordPress pop-up will come onto your screen and walk you through step by step. It's a great text tutorial to go through. I've disabled that because I'm going to walk you through it here in video rather than have that pop up every time we do a step. But I would recommend that you check it out on your own installation because it is a pretty good guide to walking through this plugin. Now, once you click Configure Settings, the plugin actually takes you down here to the Settings menu. The Getting Started tab really just walks you through those three steps, but we're going to show you how to do that here in this video. So, you have three options here Payments presentation, and other, and we're going to walk through each one, starting with payments. Now this is where you set your settings for the way your payments are going to look, the types of donations you're going to take, and the gateway which you're going to use. And right now the gateway that fundraising uses is PayPal, and I'll tell you the advantages and disadvantages both in the text and in this video. So you start off with your currency, we're in the United States, so we'll set that to US dollar. We're going to put the symbol position to the left of the $100 there. And we are not going to show decimal prices. We just want to show whole dollar figures. So we will click no. And then we're going to allow simple donations. I'll show you where that comes in later. And then this option here, if you click on or just hover over these little information tabs, it'll give you information about what these options are. So if you're not sure what advanced crowdsourcing is, you could see here that it allows you to create fundraisers with goals and rewards. And basically what that does is it allows you to give rewards for uh, people who are fundraising at a certain level, the kind of thing like uh, get a free t-shirt for donating at $100, that kind of thing. Um, and then you can also track uh, in an advanced panel uh, kind of like the thermometer percentage of the percentage that you've reached your goal. So for instance, if you have a goal of reaching $1,000 and you've reached 500, it will show that you are 50% complete. So we will click on that option to uh, enable that. And it's going to allow some other settings to take place as well. Over here, we have PayPal mode and you have two options, live or sandbox. Live just means that as soon as you uh, start entering information into the form, the fundraising form, that will actually link to a PayPal account and it will charge you uh, or the person on the other end inputting information. If you're a developer and you have a sandbox account, that's uh, an extra PayPal mode, you would uh, click here on sandbox and that allows you to test the installation without actually running a credit card. It allows you to go all the way through the testing of a transaction to make sure that it works correctly. All it does is just skip the actual charging of a credit card. So we're actually going to click on sandbox now so we can test it and make sure that it works well. Uh, you might just want to leave it on live if, if you've done this before. Down here you will see the simple payment options and for PayPal to log this properly and send information back to the plugin, it's going to give us a URL here. And we're going to put this URL into PayPal so that this works correctly. And we're going to show you how to do that in the next video where we discuss your PayPal settings. Whatever the email address is that you use for your PayPal account, you're going to put that here in the email address. And then down here is the PayPal checkout header image. Now PayPal allows you to have a specific header that is for different transactions. So you could have different headers for different products that you sell. And here, for instance, we're using a fundraiser. So for a different fundraising event or a different donation type, you could have a different header specific to that donation type. For example, 
if you were doing, say, a golf tournament and you were taking donations for your nonprofit golf tournament, you might have a header that incorporates your logo with some type of golf motif. And you could put that there. This is also, some, also something that integrates on the PayPal end and you could do it through the PayPal settings. Down here you have some advanced payment options and this is your PayPal email address or the business ID that you want to receive fees at, the PayPal currency, and then you're going to plug in your PayPal API credentials. And this we will all do through the PayPal settings tab, which we will do in the next movie. For now, we're going to click Save Changes. Now over here, the next area is the presentation settings. And here's where you can really customize the internal workings of the theme. And this is one of the reasons I really like this theme. I'm sorry, this plugin. Uh, basically, the plugin name is called Fundraising. Now, if you were to go and change that, you could call it something like Donations, and then skip down to the bottom and hit Save Changes. You'll notice that it changes here in your panel. This used to say Fundraising, now it says Donations. You can set that to anything you want. You could call this backers, you could call it funders, you can call it supporters, advocates. Anything that you want to put in there, you can put in there and really customize it to your own usage. In the same way, you can change supporters. Now normally this might say supporter, we've already changed it to donor and then the plural donors. That's really all that those two things are there. You can call this again backers, supporters, advocates. If you're doing rewards, You'll put that information here, and we will leave that as is. And for actual fundraisers or fundraising events, you can put those names here. We're going to leave them set as fundraiser and fundraisers. For pledges, we don't actually have people who are pledging money for this particular uh, organization that we're doing in this example. We're calling them donations. So we're going to change this here from uh, your installation probably says pledge and pledges. We're going to change that to donation and donations. And then the action name is donate to this project. And that will be part of the ask in the plugin uh, when it's time to put money there as well. We're also going to set a location on our server, on our website, where this will be. And you can see that this is a subdirectory of the orgspring.org website, and we're calling this subdirectory fundraisers. So if we wanted to go directly to an area of the website, for instance, if we wanted to give out links in other areas of our website or in other social media formats, we could link directly to these fundraiser pages by putting in this address. And we're setting that as fundraisers. The plugin takes care of that internally. For the actual checkout page where people will check out, we will have that being called a donation, and that's behind workspring.org slash fundraisers, which we said earlier, and then the actual fundraiser name. It's akin to like an event name or a particular donation that we're running. And then, of course, there's a thank you page that people will arrive at after they've given their donation, and that's just thank dash you. And that's what we've set to those. Those are pretty standard in terms of settings. You can leave them as they are. Down here you can select different styles and there are several different themes the way the donation page looks. We're going to leave this as basic now and then we'll change it later and show you how that changes once all the information is there. If we save this now and try to see the difference between these different uh, display settings, you're not going to see much because there's not enough information in there to really run a fundraiser yet. Uh, allow per fundraiser styles, this is a yes, no. This gives you the ability to allow people who are supporting you and running fundraisers for you to allow them to override the default styles that you're setting here. We're going to select that to be no. We want all of our fundraisers to have a consistent theme. Choose a checkout style. We want to allow people to check out directly from our panel. The, the other option is to use an elaborated checkout page, and the difference between those is simple. Again, just click over the information tab, and it'll tell you what it allows your backers or the people who are fundraising for you to do, whether they check out from the fundraising panel or uh, whether they start the process immediately. And here is some information where you can input custom CSS. If you have some developing skills, you can input CSS and choose the fundraiser selectors directly to customize the way these templates look. And you'll want to go back to the fundraising plugin 
and go down to usage or just double check on the documentation for this plugin and that will give you the information that you need to know in terms of choosing those CSS selectors. Also you can go to the WPMU.dev community for the fundraising plugin and discuss with other developers and designers how they have edited the CSS to make their themes look unique. We're going to click save changes and we'll be done with the presentation settings. Very quickly we'll click on other, there really aren't too many settings here. Do we want to add a fundraising directory to the menu? We're going to choose yes. And what that does for you is it just adds fundraisers as a menu item in your list, in your top level menu item. So we're going to put that there. If you didn't want that to show up, of course, you could click no, and then you can navigate to that in a different way. So those are the basic settings. There's really not much to see yet because we haven't added a fundraiser, but we're going to come back here in the next video, and we're going to show you how to set your PayPal settings and how to set that IPN, the instant payment notification setting as well.